Personal okay, stuff. no worries. <laughs> Welcome, Facebook folks. What's up? My voice is a little strained today. I can go a little deeper today because my voice is a little strained. The program does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of the staff, management, or ownership of this station. But it's it should. It's time to get on the right path with Right Path Real Estate Radio with Tom Perry. Get the answer to your question that's keeping you from taking action and succeeding today. <clears throat> Get ready. The guy that will put your fears behind you is on the air now. Taking calls at 713-785-1817. Toll free eight seven seven eight eight one zero two seven one. Hey, good morning, Michael. Here's your host, Tom Perry. Hot mics. Hey, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Right Path Real Estate Radio seven one three seven eight five one eight one seven. That's seven one three seven eight five one eight one seven. Some people listen to us on on uh, AM eleven ten. Some people listen to us on iTunes. Some people listen to us on TuneIn Radio. Some folks actually listen to the podcast later. They can go to business1110ktek.com, go down to the podcast section, go to our radio show. All of our shows are listed there. Some people actually walk up to me in a networking event and say, Hey, Tom, I watch your radio show every day. And that always sounds a little bit interesting to me, watching a radio show. But they do that because we broadcast live. We simulcast on the Book of Faces. And then eventually it goes up on YouTube as well. So lots of places to watch us. People watch us nationwide. And do not adjust your dial. It's normally Jason in on a Monday. I haven't done a Monday in forever. But we were doing our weekend retreat this past weekend. And uh, Jason went to a Christmas party on Saturday. Woke up Sunday morning with the flu. Not feeling too well. We were going to do a best of show. And I said, you know, I'm feeling actually pretty good. I could do the show on Monday. Normally, I do Investor Build Your Team Tuesday, and I do the same thing on Thursdays. And then on Wednesdays, it's Jason and I together, so it's a rare opportunity to have a show to be able to talk about whatever I want. (laughs) So obviously, so a topic came up this past weekend that's just really been getting under my skin. Because in real estate, oftentimes what people will do is they will calculate their return or what I should say potential return on their investment. And then they also will calculate what it is that they're going to be putting into the investment. But they don't actually calculate how much risk is involved that they're signing themselves up for. Because you realize that if you're using leverage, you could actually lose more than what you're putting in in cash on the investment. Now, you know, we teach people how to reduce the risk or at least manage that risk so that you're getting increased returns and decreased risk. In fact, one of the things that we love about working with some of the private money lenders is, you know, the gold standard in terms of risk and return is the bond, the U.S. bond. And right now, the bond is about, you know, one point and something. So as you increase return, how much corresponding risk do you increase as it relates to either bonds or savings, things like that? So, you know, put money in a CD. If I was looking it up over the weekend. If you put in, you know, we bank at Amogee, go to Amogee.com. You put in jumbo CDs. There's a little section there. If you put $100,000 or more into one of their savings accounts in a CD, a certificate of deposit, then they're paying a whopping, if you lock it up for 60 months, five years or more, they're paying a whopping 1% rate of return. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can sleep well at night knowing that your money is safe and secure and you're making $1,000 on your $100,000. Every single year. So just think about it. By the time you get to five years out, you've made $5,000. Yeah, I'm saying that with a voice of excitement as if that's something to be excited about. And we all know that's not something to be excited about. So if you were to double your potential return from 1% to 2%, that'd be fantastic, right? But if you're doubling your risk, 
that's not so swell. So what would it be like to go two, three, four, five, six, seven? You know, the closer you get to 20% returns, it's, it's more difficult to find a 20% return that doesn't have any risk at all associated with it, right? So what you're looking at is how much am I increasing, increasing my ter- uh, return versus how much am I rec- increasing my risk? Most people can calculate pretty easily the return side. They get a lot more speculative, I should say optimistic, when it comes to return. Now, this is not a solicitation for money in any way, shape, form, or fashion, but Jason and I, we bought, fixed, and flipped over 450 houses in the last four and a half years. So oftentimes, people are lending us money at like, let's say, 7% for illustrative purposes. So they're getting a 7% rate of return versus a 1% rate of return, but we've got so much experience and we're typically buying, let's say we're buying a $300,000 house and it needs $100,000 worth of work. We're only borrowing $210,000. In other words, we're buying the house for $110,000. We're putting $100,000 of repairs into it. It's $210,000 that we're all in. What's the chance, number one, that we're not going to be able to pay back the, the $210,000? Number two, that that property is going to fall in value from three hundred dollars down to two ten. dollars And you can say, well, it could flood, it could burn down. We've got insurance for all those things, so the money's protected. So the, the chance of not being able to pay back the two ten dollars is, I won't say it's, you know, I couldn't imagine some very unlikely scenario it'd be a cataclysmic event, something like that. But in which case, you know, all bets are off on everything. You know, then you have to you wonder, you know, are banks even safe, right? Is the federal government even safe? But how much risk are you increasing when you're increasing your return sevenfold? So that's pretty simple to, to calculate. So what we're looking at is calculating risk versus calculating return and understanding that it's relatively easy to calculate risk more challenging most people don't even look at the risk side now then i want to change subjects and realize that you know what there's a when people are talking about the cost of doing something uh i i told a story this past weekend used to be involved and in, still still am to some extent helping people you know get healthier through you know, adding some vitamins into their daily routine. And people oftentimes, one of the first questions you ask, you know, because I'd give away two or three days worth of vitamins, let people try them out. And I wouldn't recommend you try that with a Centrum, you know, giving a three days worth of Centrum and saying, hey, try these out, see how you feel. Nobody's going to feel any different. But there are vitamins out there that if you're not used to putting good nutrition in your body, you put really good vitamins in your body, you're going to feel better in three days than you felt in a really long time. But then people are feeling better and they're like, well, how much do these cost? And then my response to that, not trying to be a smart aleck, but just wanting them to think, because oftentimes people, when they're asking questions, they're not considering all the possibilities. They, They ask the question, how much do they cost? And I say, you mean if you take them or if you don't? And they go, well, what do you mean? And I go, well, I want you to be honest with yourself and realize there's a cost for your decision regardless of which you choose. Because sometimes people say, well, if I spend the money, there's a cost, right? Of course there is. But there's also a cost if you don't spend the money, and which is greater. Because I've been taking good quality vitamins, gosh, since December of 99. I was in my 30s then, right? So, but I take vitamins today, not so that I feel better today, which I do, but it's the consistent habit over time that produces results. I want to be reaping the benefits of sowing good health and good nutrition for 30, 40, 50 years when I'm in my 80s. I don't want to be in the in my 80s when I'm in a state of lack of ease 
you know, a state of ease is being healthy, right? So if you understand the English language, some words are kind of interesting. If you put dis in front of the word ease, you get disease. That's a lack of ease, right? So I don't want to be in a state of disease in my 80s and go, you know, now might be a really good time to start improving my health. I might want to start putting good nutrition in my body now. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. It's over time. Are you putting the right things in your body? So we taught a weekend retreat this weekend. We were giving away a lot of financial education about growing your wealth and growing your income over time. Very few people become millionaires overnight. Only way I know that people typically do it is either you know, going public in a stock market, which didn't happen overnight. You know, it's, it's amazing to me when you see people that's been really successful and they, you know, they get to the top of the mountain of success and people go, oh man, that guy was an overnight success or that woman was an overnight success. Yeah, it looks to the outside like it happened overnight. What you didn't see is all the hard work and effort and training. You know, the Olympics are coming up. One minute. The Winter Olympics in South Korea, right? And, you know, there'll be some athletes that will become household names, I'm sure, at the next Olympics. And people are like, well, this person's an overnight success. No, <laughs> very few people are an overnight success. You know, you've, maybe you're hearing them for the very first time this morning, and you hadn't heard them last night. So, but you don't look and see all the work and effort you know i've just recently come across a comedian named gary owen funny funny man and went to his uh, show last night here in houston and uh i'll continue that story on the other side of the break you're listening to right path real estate radio if you want to call in and ask questions about finding fixing funding analyzing buy fix and flip buy and hold wholesaling real estate or you want to join in my conversation 713-785-1817 give us a call Mike's off. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You found or inherited a great investment property. Problem is, you don't know how much it's worth, or more importantly, what to do to maximize your investment while mitigating risk. This is exactly why we started Next Gen Appraisals. Next Gen is a group of appraisers specializing in investment real estate. We understand that investors aren't just looking for a number of what their property is worth, but a comprehensive analysis of the market. Give Next Gen a call at 713 713- 346-9911 or check us out online at nextgenappraisals.com. As a real estate investor, you rely on your property inspector to determine the current condition of the home and your potential return on investment from an investor's point of view. Principal Inspections was founded by investor Jeremy Humphrey to do just that. Principal Inspections works from the investor's point of view, providing affordable, fast, quality inspections with information pertinent to investors while not clouding the report with unnecessary details. Principal Inspections will save you time and money. Call Principal Inspections, 832-684-5516 or online at principalinspections.com. License number 21264. Investor loans offering up to 100% financing are still available. You just have to know where to look. Look no further than Noble Mortgage. Noble Mortgage is a full-service mortgage company that's been helping investors since 2003. Noble Mortgage offers up to 100% financing to investors that covers purchase, repairs, and closing costs. In addition to private money, Noble Mortgage offers conventional loans, FHA, and even no-income documentation loans for both residential and commercial properties. Call and ask about our five-point guarantee, which includes free pre-qualifications within two business days. Call 713-680-8100 or visit noblemoney.com. That's noblemoney.com. Our team has over 50 years experience in the mortgage industry. Call us today, 713-680-8100 or visit us on the web, noblemoney.com, noblemoney.com. NMLS 292143, 8203 Willow Place Drive, Houston, Texas, 77070. 
taxes. Just the sound of that word makes people cringe. At Anderson Advisors, we provide tax reduction through asset protection for real estate investors throughout the country. Our unique philosophy has CPAs, lawyers, bookkeepers, and estate planners with one common goal, helping you, the real estate investor. Check us out today at AndersonAdvisors.com. And don't forget so to So you saw Gary Owens, huh? I did. That's oh. crazy. I love him. I oh, love my him. God. He was so funny. Are you, you scored some major cool points with me because I didn't think that you would like him. But oh, why? He's funny. I don't know. He's just so... <laughs> Uh, he can be brass sometimes. Oh my god, he's brass. Uh, yeah, but he's funny as hell. Get out. Oh my god. Track remodeling is that the improv? Yeah. Uh -huh. family yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he, yeah, he had his. Yeah, he he was in town. He was, he's been in town the last two weeks. Yesterday was his last. I went to the seven o'clock show, and then he had his last show. You know, here was right after that. Okay. Yeah. You know, he was talking about other comedians that have gotten in trouble, and he was. I mean, he just talked about his kids. You know, I've seen a lot of his work. You know. On YouTube and stuff like that, but uh -huh. I mean, it was all brand new material. It was funny. Oh my gosh, it was funny. And and he wasn't feeling real well. And uh, so he was drinking this hot tea and like a Starbucks cup, you know. And he, and he's like, "Man, you guys quit laughing quick here in Houston." <laughs> and and because uh, he said, you know, normally people laugh for a long time. It gives me a chance to. You know, to take a sip or something like that. My throat's a little sore. I'm coming down with something, and you know, y'all, you know, joke's over, y'all. Y'all laugh real quick, get it over with. And you're like ready for the next joke. <laughs> oh, he was hilarious, and and he's like, you know, hashtag doing what I do. He's talking about how he lies on Instagram all the time. He goes, hey, anytime you you're reading my Instagram and it says hashtag doing what I do, I'm lying. <laughs> he said, in fact, you know, when I when I leave here, you watch about one o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna have a picture of me in front of. NRG Stadium, you know, just hey, doing what I do. <laughs> That's funny. That's yeah. Funny. Hot mics. Hey, welcome back, Right Path Real Estate Radio, 713-785-1817. 713-785-1817. If you want to participate in the show, feel free to go to Facebook.com forward slash Right Path Real Estate. You can join in, ask questions there. Hey, good morning, Sylvia. How you doing? <laughs> Type in if you want to say hello. Uh, you can also call in 713-785-1817, 713-785-1817. So, yeah, I was talking about before the break, went to see Gary Owen. And, you know, I've just discovered him like in the last six months. But at the show last night, you know, people were saying, well, how long have you been doing comedy? 20 years. He's been doing comedy for 20 years. And uh, so people don't normally see all the work, effort, and all of that that goes in to that. So on the break, went out, talked to Maribel. She's one of our, she's our transaction coordinator. She's an amazing woman. And, she, and I said, hey, how's the weekend going, things like that. She said, oh, my dad's in a nursing home. And that's been kind of difficult. He, you know, was struggling health-wise. He'll be getting out probably the next week or 10 days. And I said, that's good. And he said, you know, she said, you know, the sad thing is going there and seeing all the people that are never going to get out. And there's been some kids, you know, caroling and things like that for the holidays and all that. And she said it was really tough watching my dad, you know, crying when the, when the carolers are coming by. And, you know, what I realize is that we get to that stage in our life and it's a chance for us to start reflecting on what all has gone on. And a lot of people are getting close to the end of their life with regret. And it's always fascinating to things when if you talk to older folks what it is that they re regret and the regret they typically have that they talk about is the things that they wish that they had taken more risks on. Very few people have regrets about things that they tried and failed at. What they really risk is that they didn't try more, that they didn't risk failure more. So if you haven't had a chance to sit down and kind of interview you know, seniors, sit down and talk, at one point in time, one of my careers was I sold long-term care insurance three appointments a day. I have a 10 o'clock appointment, a 1 o'clock appointment, and typically a 3 or 3.30 appointment in the afternoon. So three appointments a day, five days a week. The average age of my client was 74. My oldest client was 87. My youngest was 49. So I got a chance day in and day out, three times a day to sit down in people's homes, just kind of hear their story. And uh, I'd spend the first hour, hour and a half just getting to know them. And I'd ask them questions like, you know, husband and wife married 50 years. Hey, how'd y'all meet? 
and uh, just to get to know them, and f- their l- eyes would light up. They would uh, they'd get all excited telling their story, and they kind of chuckle a little bit, have like a little sly grin, and it would kind of take them back in time. And you could just kind of watch this metamorphosis, almost like a caterpillar turning into a bu- butterfly. I mean, these, these you know older seniors, you, you could feel them in their mind going back, getting young again. And they'd tell some of the craziest stories. Sometimes they'd be like, well, we were on a blind date, and we were double dating on a blind date. And I was actually you know, on a blind date with her best friend, and she was actually on a blind date with my twin brother. And, uh, and so she spilled some popcorn in her lap, and I went back to the, to, the, to the concession stand to get some napkins. And then my brother got up and went to the bathroom, and six weeks later, we were married. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> it's like, how did that happen? And they just had some crazy stories on how people got married back then. I mean, they didn't, they didn't, there was no television. They didn't waste any time, you know, courting and all that. And, and you're like, wait, okay, come again. The story was you weren't even on the date with the woman you're now married with for 50 years. You were on a date with her best friend, but y'all switched who y'all were, y'all, I mean, y'all didn't leave with who you were coming with, and just getting your head wrapped around all of that, and in six weeks? I mean, how could you know in six weeks? I mean, I know people that have dated six years, and they're still not ready to get engaged, and I'm like, what a different time we live in, right? And then when you start looking at more and more and more of their story as they're getting, you know, I would ask him, hey, you're 85 years old, what regrets do you have? And no one ever regretted that they had tried something and failed. I've never talked to someone in their 70s, 80s, or 90 years old about regret and that they regretted trying something that led to a failure. It's always been, I wish I had done more of this, or I wish I had done more of that. I wish I would have taken more risks in life. That's what most people regret as they start getting older. So back to the, how much does it cost? You've got to recognize it costs something if you do whatever it is that you're considering. When you're making a decision to whatever it is that you want to do, there is a cost there. But oftentimes, we're not weighing what the cost is if we don't do that whatever that is. So I was using the illustration of taking vitamins. You know, there's a cost. I spend about, I don't know, $200 a month, ballpark, on vitamins. And some people say, well, gosh, that's a lot of money. Well, yeah, it's about $2,400 a year. But what's the cost of not? I mean, with the healthcare system the way that it is today, if I don't eat right and exercise and take good care of my health now, I mean, what's the cost of being sick? What's the loss of productivity if I'm sick for a week or 10 days? What's the cost of, you know, having a heart attack, stroke, or cancer, or, you know, having my, you know, disc degenerate early or my bones getting brittle? I mean, what's, what's the cost of being in pain? I mean, you know, I remember about three years ago, um, I started having a herniated disc, and I don't know really how it happened. And it's amazing when you have just a, it wasn't a, on a scale of one to 10, it wasn't a pain level of a level 10, but it was a nagging like a seven or eight. I had it for about six months. And it's amazing how much focus and concentration, a little bit of pain causes when it's just always there, just kind of always, you know, like, hey, I'm still here, just kind of like poking you, you know, like, you know, just kind of poking you. And, and it was, it kind of radiated, went from my neck all the way down across the, my shoulders in the, in the back of my triceps, my triceps would just start aching and, and in, that, uh, in my forearm, just the top of my arm, my forearm, and then all the way down it started num- numbness and tingling in my three fingers, my thumb and my, my index and my middle finger on my, on my left hand. And, uh, and I thought, first I thought, you know, is it blockage? Is, you know, is it a heart attack? And I'm like, I don't think so. And found out it's, the, it's the, you know, your little finger and your ring finger that, that would be if it was, you know, your heart problems. But it, these three, it's it's a herniated disc. Off, they call it radiculopathy. And don't ask me to spell that. And it was amazing how much focus and attention that took over that entire period of time. 
So how much productivity did I lose during that time when it was always in the back of my mind? So what's the cost of that? So one of the things that we do is we help people have a new way of thinking. You know, if you want to have a new future than the future that you're on today, the first thing that has to change, oftentimes people think it's your, it's your actions that have to shift. The number one thing that has to shift is your mindset. Most people don't have the mindset to be successful. In fact, it takes a long time. I, I, we can't shift someone's mind in a weekend. You know, we, we teach everything that we know that we've learned in how to buy, fix, and flip, how to wholesale, how to buy and hold in our weekend retreat. That's the good news. We teach it all. But the bad news is we teach it all. It'd be a little bit like... We had a guy that was sitting on the front row of our weekend retreat, and I interacted with him quite a bit and, you know, asked him, hey, you know, what kind of degree do you have? You, you went to college. It's obvious that. And he said, well, I've got a mechanical engineering, engineering degree. And I said, well, you know, how long did it take you to get your engineering degree? And he goes, all total about eight years because he's got a, a bachelor's and a master's, and he, he did some extended study beyond that. So about eight years of education. And I'm like, hey, can, can I hang out with you next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you know, pretty much from nine to five? You teach me everything you know. You know, let me be where you are. You know, just kind of transfer all that knowledge. Let me step in and, and do what you do as a mechanical engineer. You know, have the same level of success. Be able to get hired on at a company, you know, doing what you do. Being a mechanical engineer after doing that for three days. He goes, uh, I, don't, I don't think I can teach you that in three days. Two minutes. And, you know, Jason and I have been doing this since July of of uh, 2013. We've been doing this for about four and a half, almost five years. I can't teach you everything. I mean, I can. I can give it all to you, but you can't absorb it all. There's a reason why, you know, even a master's degree in mechanical engineering, you know, and when you're an undergrad, some people say, yeah, but Tom, you don't understand. When you get an undergrad degree in mechanical engineering, there's a lot of classes that aren't really even mechanical engineering. Yeah, that's true. But when you get into a master's degree, it's, it's all mechanical engineering. I mean, it's all mechanical engineering all the time, right? I mean, it's, it's everything related to mechanical. You're not taking the, you know, the basics, the English and the history and all those things when you start moving into graduate level programs typically. It's all on that subject matter. So why does it take two years to get a master's? I mean, you've already got the basics down, right? And what a lot of people don't realize is that if you don't get the basics down as a good, solid foundation, One minute. and you don't have somebody looking over your shoulder, the chances that you're going to be able to stick and stay in this business long term is not in your favor. In fact, there's a reason why we know that there's a 97% failure rate among people that get involved in real estate education. And we'll talk more about that on the other side of the break. You're listening to Right Path Real Estate Radio, 713-785-1817. That's 713-785-1817. Or you can go to facebook.com forward slash Right Path Real Estate, and you can join in the conversation there. You can post your questions. We can actually talk about some real estate today, but I want to talk mostly about mindset. We'll continue more about mindset on the other side of the break. Mike's off. So I'll get caught up on some hellos. So Michael, hello. Andy, Jeff, Richard, Erica, you know that there are over James, trillion dollars Sebastian, in Ryan, in Valley, US. Matt. Imagine what's up, Matt Downs? Andy? Man, why aren't you sleeping, deals? Andy? Well, you can. <laughs> Jeff Emerson, <laughs> always love when you're in the house. Here in Houston, Texas, Yolanda, Slava, Philip, Sylvia, Mora. They can be used Miss Harris in the house. You know, I thought about you the other day been a while it's been too long we need to do lunch again i always enjoy getting together with you you have me raise my bar anytime we go to lunch my bar's right real really high right now you help me raise it every time i'm around you you're a quality person ron cameron joseph good morning ginger welcome always I think of, of you when I see the, the mountains in the back. <laughs> Not because Amarillo has mountains like that, but it's cold. <laughs> Way colder than here. Michael Bailey, what's up? Joel? Joshua, what's up? Hey, good morning, Randy. Good morning, James. money in a real estate deal. If your insurance company is slow or non-responsive, you could lose a deal like that. 
You need a quick yeah, folks, I'm only working a half a day today. I'm going to do the radio show, and then I'm going to... Uh, they know what you need and when you need. I've got a meeting at 10:30. When that's done, I am done for the day. Buy and hold or flipper. Good morning, Colby. Properties on a single policy. Why aren't you sleeping now? Benchmark has been in business for over 10 years, and we insure over 30,000 properties. Contact Benchmark about our exclusive investor package. Call us and let us show you what we can do for you at 281-569-4353. That's 281-569-4353 or online at benchmarkbroker.com. That's benchmarkbroker.com. That's 281-569-4353. Or online hey, good morning, at John. benchmarkbroker.com. Do you have cracks in your brick, doors that stick, or sheetrock that's coming apart? Then you may have foundation movement. Due to our expansive soils in the Houston area, it's probably not a question of if you have movement, but when. Call Foundation Check for a truly independent, unbiased, foundation evaluation foundation check has been in business since 2009 and has completed over 1400 evaluations we're not in the business of repairing foundations or selling you some of these bumper music are good enough to dance we to. are in the business of evaluating your foundation our product is designed for house flippers landlords I have to say for doing the weekend retreat this weekend I feel awesome each of our files is reviewed by a licensed engineer remember to check <laughs> before ever repair Call three four six seven zero two. So right back, <laughs> it's coming. I have no idea who that is. I assume that might be Colby. <laughs> or you can reach us online at foundationcheck.com. That's foundationcheck.com. Are you expecting to close accurately on time and with lots of communication on your home purchase? You've come to the right place. I'm Jennifer Hernandez, senior loan officer with Legacy Mutual Mortgage. Our goal is to give our borrowers and referral partners an amazing experience during the loan process. My team believes in putting people and culture before results. Our company concentrates on building those teams who operate with structure, process, and recognition for going the extra mile for you. This way, we have the Yeah, Kobe, what's weird is, so it shows on here that you joined ever. as you, and then when you comment, you comment as right pass. So that's, get started. that's what was throwing me off. That's Hernandez, the Hernandez team at Legacy Mutual Mortgage. Jennifer.LegacyMutual.com We got 15 or seconds. Or call yep. 713-579-3611. Again, Jennifer.LegacyMutual.com We can't wait to consult with you soon. NMLS 514497. Equal Housing Opportunity Lender. NMLS 514497. This is Business 1110. Call Tom at 713-785-1817 and look for us on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash Right Path Real Estate. Hot mics. Hey, welcome back. Right Path Real Estate Radio, 713-785-1817. So we're talking about mindset. And you know what's interesting is, so I went to the Gary Owen show last night you know, the overnight success, Gary Owen, been doing comedy for 20 years, you know, and just got success overnight. People don't see the amount of work that he put in over time. And uh, waiting for the show, got there a little bit early because I uh, figured there was going to be a line getting in, wanted to get a good seat, all that. <clears throat> so the venue that I went to, they were actually showing some football games on the big screen while people were, like, filling in and all that. So saw a little bit of the tail end of the Pittsburgh-New England game in Pittsburgh. Looked like Pittsburgh was winning. Then New England comes back like they always do. And then looked like Pittsburgh, oh my gosh, they were going to come back. Looked like they scored a touchdown, but under review, they called it back. And then on the next play, you just thought, man, it's going in, it's going, going in. Tip ball, intercepted. New England wins. Again, and you stop and think about the difference between a coach and a cheerleader. You know, the cheerleaders for New England, yay, go team, ah, everybody's awesome. They're, but they're that way whether you're winning or you're losing, right? Always, yay, go team, you know, defense, defense, offense, oh, whatever, right? That's my cheerleader imitation. <laughs> so, but... Belichick, the sideline coach, head coach, some people argue maybe the greatest coach of football of all time. I don't know, Bear Bryant, he's pretty good. 
some guy named Vince Lombardi. He he was pretty good. Some people say. You know, he's not going to say, hey, go team, go team, go offense. He's not going to say, come on, guys, y'all can do it. He's not really that kind of coach, not really a cheerleader. Coach is a guy that gets in your backside, puts his foot where it hurts, says, man, we got to get this done. They, they call it out like it is. They tell you the truth, even when the truth hurts. You got to look in life and say, do I want a coach or do I want a cheerleader? Do I want a pat on the back? Do I want somebody to be honest with me? Some people tell you they want to be honest, then they get offended when you tell them the truth. I was being honest with some folks on Saturday, sitting down, doing a little one-on-one consultation with them. They didn't come back on Sunday. And I thought about, you know, Every team in the NFL is loaded with great athletes. Most of these guys are, I mean, they're in the top one-tenth of one percent of being mentally smart when it comes to football. They're physically incredible. I mean, even the worst player on the worst team is, I mean, you realize that Typically, the guys on the practice squad, they're not good enough to make the team. And those guys, I mean, the margin of difference is so minuscule. What I'll tell you is the number one difference between the people that are on the team and the people that aren't is mindset. It's not that one guy's, you know, a lot stronger than the other guy. One guy's a lot bigger than the other guy. I mean, are guys bigger? I mean... It's not always the biggest guy that has the biggest heart, right? We talk about heart in in athletics. How do you measure the size of someone's heart? They're, you know, it's it's easy to say, hey, get knocked down seven times, get up eight, right? It's easy to say, have a coach tell you, hey, get down and do 100 push-ups. It's not the coach doing the 100 push-ups, right? The work begins when you start pushing. You know, I know for myself... I need someone else holding me accountable oftentimes. Now, I'll hold myself accountable to a certain standard, but if I head into the gym and I say, look, Tom, I'm going to do 10 bench presses, 100 pounds. I'm going to get 10. I get to about 8. I start wearing out. Nobody's spotting me. I'm like, I'm not sure I can get number 9 out. I'll go ahead and rack it. 8's good enough, right? I get a coach. I get a personal trainer. He's there with me. It's even better when I have somebody else and I'm, I'm sharing a personal trainer with somebody. I'm, I'm in it together. Then I get competitive. I have somebody else pushing me, and I get competitive. You know, now it's not 100 pounds on the bar. Now it's 145 pounds on the bar. And now, you know, hey, we're going to do 10, and, you know, my, my workout partner, he's my size, and, and he got 11. Heck, that I'm going to get 12. I'm going to push myself beyond what I think I can do because somebody else is there, you know, that I'm competing against. Then you look at who do I want to compete against? I started playing racquetball when I was eight. I got my first racket when I was nine. My ninth birthday present was a racquetball racket. I started playing in some tournaments in high school. I started winning some tournaments when I was in college. And so I was a pretty good racquetball player. In fact, I was a real good racquetball player. A lot of times people say, hey, Tom, you know, I've always wanted to learn how to play racquetball. And uh, will you teach me how to play? And I actually started teaching lessons. People would pay me to teach them how to play racquetball. And what was interesting is, you know, I never wanted to play beginners because that didn't make me better. I knew the top eight or ten players in all of Houston that – and, and they didn't always play in the same place, but we, we all had each other's phone numbers. And we would call each other, hey, where are you playing tonight? Oh, we're playing at the Bally's over in West U. Okay. And we'd, we'd all show up over there, and we'd start playing. And then, you know, call up on Thursday night. Hey, where's everybody playing tonight? Oh, we're playing at the, you know, 24-hour fitness over in Memorial. Okay. Everybody shows up over there. Wherever it was, we were, we were all playing. I always want to play the top eight or ten guys in the city because iron sharpens iron. Everybody knows that. 
But it's it's amazing to me that people want to hold hold themselves accountable to themselves. That's difficult to do. I don't know a single winner in athletics that didn't have a coach starting at an early age. You know, you think about gymnastics. How old do most gymnasts start? How old do most football players? How old were they when they started? Most baseball players when they started, how old were they? And were they teaching themselves or did they have a coach? Just teaching them the basics. I think about Michael Phelps and his coach. You know, Michael doesn't need a coach to teach him how to do the freestyle stroke. I think Michael's pretty good at, you know, knowing and having muscle memory and knowing, you know, how many strokes it takes for him to get the length of the pool. You know what coach needs to do for Michael is keep Michael disciplined, right? Keep Michael doing the right things every single day. You know, everybody knows what Michael be doing. He'd be hanging out in Colorado doing what Colorado doesn't do, right? He's doing what he's doing, right? Hanging out with women and doing what they do in Colorado. And coach comes along and says, hey, time to get back in the pool. But coach, I don't feel like it. Oftentimes people don't feel like getting up and putting the work in. So if I wanted to get started in something, if I want to get started in hiking, and I wanted to do hiking at a high level, here's what I'd want to do. I'd want to find who are some of the top hikers. I want to start hanging around with their group. You know, there's a truth in life that you become the average of the five people you hang out with the most. Colby from our group, he told an interesting story at the weekend retreat on Sunday morning. He went to an ugly sweater party hanging out with some people from his old neighborhood on Saturday night. And he said, you know, a lot of the people, they just had broke mindsets. When you start hanging around with people that don't have broken mindsets, you get back around people that have broken mindsets, it's, you, you just, it's, it's like great. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard. You just can't do it anymore. You can do it for an evening. You know, you can sit on a couch and just watch people. But it's not something like, man, I want to do this again and again and again. No. I want to hang out with people that are doing things at a high level. I mean, how'd you like to have somebody like Elon Musk in your, in your circle of top five friends? Somebody like a Warren Buffett in your circle of top five friends? I mean, you think that your, your thinking would change hanging around like somebody like that all the time? Do you think that you would start talking a little different. You might start dressing a little different. Your outlook on life might be a little different. Two minutes. Michael, I don't think mindset is 90% of it. I think it's 99% of it. I think mindset is where real success happens. You know, what's interesting when I look about at the New England Patriots, it's not just Bill Belichick. I mean, he's amazing. He's awesome. He's a great co- coach. He sets the culture. He sets the standard. He sets the bar. But once he has some leaders in the locker room that buy into what he's preaching, then they're preaching it too. Now you've got crowd mentality. Now you've got a pack of dogs that are, that are bringing the whole pack standard up. You know, there's a show, I don't, I don't remember the, the guy's name. That It was a show about, uh, he was kind of like the dog whisperer, right? Somebody will be able to type it in on Facebook. That's one of the things I love about I don't have to remember everybody and all the facts. Somebody will bring it for me. But... You know, you bring a dog that doesn't know how to behave right into a pack of dogs that does. It's the it's the pack that that raises the standard for the for that for that new dog, and uh, and so you know when you're when you're picking your coach, you have to look at it's not just the coach; it's what's the pack like, and. You know, we oftentimes encourage people. There's quite a few real estate coaches in town and people that come in from around the country. And I've sometimes described that picking a real estate coach, you're not just getting the coach, you're getting the pack. And it's a little bit like, you know, when I went to college, I went and thought about joining a fraternity and decided it wasn't for me. But I I went and visited a couple of different fraternities and realized that, you know, it's a little bit like Rush for women and going to a sorority for for men, for boys, <laughs> it's going, yeah, I'll call it boys because they're not, they're not men yet when they're going through Russia in a fraternity. But those of y'all, yeah, Caesar Milan, yeah, that's the guy. You know, he knows how to raise the standard of behavior for a, for a dog, right? And then he, he's got this pack that will help it reinforce 
what that behavior is. You're listening to Right Path Real Estate Radio, 713-785-1817. See you on the other side of the break. Mike Soft. Hi, Clint Coons here, attorney and avid real estate investor. You know the greatest mistake real estate investors make is not understanding the potential liability that exists from owning real estate. At Anderson Business, Legal, and Tax Advisors, we specialize in protecting real estate investors in all 50 states. In addition to structuring your business for optimum protection, we provide guidance so you pay the least amount of taxes available under the law. We have 150 employees that range from lawyers to CPAs to estate planners and much more. Download our free ebook, The Invisible Investor Strategy, today at AndersonAdvisors.com or call for a free risk reduction analysis and financial blueprint at 800 706 4741. Anderson Business Advisors will help you keep more of what you earn. Call us today at 800 706 4741 and mention Right Path Real Estate. <laughs> oh my God, this is crazy. Are you a realtor or seller that is concerned about the new TRID rules and closing on time? I open up my I'm email, Nikki. Senior loan I have this uh-huh. email. The title Mortgage. of the Master email the is regret. Close. <laughs> 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 I'm on this. Uh, I get an email every day from this guy. And contract to close associate. This guy's a personal trainer. Today at and he said, hashtag truth. I do not feel like writing this email. In fact, I had to drag myself to this laptop and force my fingers on the keyboard just to make this message happen it's just one of those blah feeling type of days you know one of those times when you don't feel like doing much of anything i faced the same struggle with my workout this morning too i did not want to go to the gym and my brain fought me every step of the way exiting my house ugh driving to the gym double ugh entering the building triple ugh starting my first rep quadruple ugh and to top it all off my drive is only one minute away i was very tempted to turn around and spend more time lounging in bed between the warm sheets but somehow i pushed through all all these obstacles and did it anyway and he said you know why because I can think back to many days in the past when I did skip my workout and I also remember regretting that choice no this isn't the type of regret that makes you feel guilty or shameful it's the type of regret you feel after realizing you missed out on something beneficial in this example I would have missed the significant energy boost and sense of accomplishment that can only be felt after a demanding workout that's funny. That's true. That's, that's my, that's the top email in my box right now. Are some getting in the way of your retirement plans? Why settle for mediocre results? There's a better place to invest. The experts agree. Single family real estate is one of the best investments you can make. Find out how JB Fund Services offers a 9% preferred return and up to a 13% waterfall. Call us today at 281-915-0906 or visit our website jbfundservices.com that's 281-915-0906 this investment is offered to accredited investors as a real estate investor you rely on your property inspector to determine the current condition of the home and your potential return on investment principal inspections was founded by investor jeremy humphrey to do just that working from the investor's point of view principal inspections will give you turnkey inspections that are high quality affordable and focused on information pertinent to investors while not clouding the report with unnecessary details founder jeremy humphrey comes from a family of real estate investors he started principal inspections for investors because as an investor himself he experienced the need for fast quality inspections with information directly pertaining to property condition and potential resale value principal inspections will save you time and money Call Principal Inspections, 832-684-5516. That's 832-684-5516. Or go online to principalinspections.com. That's principalinspections.com. License number 21264. This is Business I got to bounce my step today. Call Tom at 713-785-1817. And look for us on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash right path real estate. Hot mics. Hey, welcome back. Right Path Real Estate Radio. So this is our short segment. What I want to tell you is the year is not over. You can lay a foundation between now and the end of the year for a better 2018. We've got an intro to income and wealth in real estate event that's happening this Thursday, December 21st. It's going to be at 630 in the evening. So what does it cost you to go? Well, in terms of money, nothing. It will cost you your time, 
More importantly, what's it going to cost you not to go? Yeah, I mean, it could cost you uh, a 2018 that doesn't turn out as well as it potentially could. It, it could cost you not growing your knowledge about how to grow income and wealth in 2018. You know, it's amazing to me when I sit down with someone and I see a better future for them than they see for themselves. In fact, I see how close they actually are to making a million dollars a year and what a difference their life would have. I was working with some just from stage over the weekend talking with this couple. Actually, there was four of them, and uh, there was two couples, and they're doing a real estate deal. They're flipping a house in a in, in a hundred and fifty thousand dollar price range and they're moving walls and things like that and they're gonna do a lot of work. The path that they were on, they're gonna do a lot of work. And what I realize is they're doing everything they know how to do. But it's a little bit like a football player practicing drills that don't lead to the kind of results that a Bill Two Belichick minutes. would come along and go, No, 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 that that's you I, I know you think you're doing right by practicing that, but you're practicing something that's wrong. And so practice doesn't make Perfect. Practice makes permanent. Perfect practice makes perfect. And so what I realized is they were going to put out a lot of time, effort, and energy, a lot of work, and they were going to make about $30,000. Now, nothing wrong with that, but making 30000 when you could make 67000 with 10% of the work. Imagine putting out 100% effort and you make 30000 Imagine putting out 10% of that effort and making 67.5. Wouldn't you agree that there's some people that work a year and make $10,000 in a year because they work part time? There's some people that work full time and they make $40,000 a year and they work hard for $40,000. There's other people that work hard and make $200,000. And it's not just education that makes the difference. It's not just going to college. And there's people that didn't go to college that make $200,000 a year. And they work less than the people that work hard and make $40,000 a year. Mindset makes a difference. If you want to change your mindset, go to rightpathrealestate.com. Register for this event. It's Thursday, December 21st. It's 630. It's going to be the Hilton Houston West Chase. 9999 West Timer. So go to rightpathrealestate.com, go to upcoming events. We also have a webinar coming Tuesday, Change Your Met Mindset, December 19th. Go to the website, and then our next Pathway to Income and Wealth workshop is going to be Friday, January 19th through Sunday the 21st. Mark it on your calendar. Go to rightpathrealestate.com. I'll be on the radio tomorrow. Build your team Tuesday. See you later, guys. All right, have a good one. Thanks, you do the same. Bye. Bye.